Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. In the last episode, we got through the Brine Cave, that's what it was called, with the help of Chadot and the rest of our crew as well. In this episode, there's no turning back from the rest of the story for the rest of the game. So, we're hightailing it straight to the final boss, pretty much. Chapter 19, To the Hidden Land. All right, what's going on? We didn't see any of this, right? I forget all the time where I saved. All right, what's going on here? Oh, Guildmaster. I never realized how comfy this place looks at nighttime. Like, I kind of really like the blue, the dark blue in the window. How's Chadot? Will he be all right? Yep, he needs to sleep and recover tonight. I think he'll be fine tomorrow. Yeah, I'm glad to hear it. Yep, yep, that's a load off my mind, by golly. Hey, hey, that's great. Chatout will be okay, hey, hey. Guildmaster? What is it, Sunflora? Guildmaster, you said that Chatout saved you at the cave long ago. Can you tell us about it? You know what, honestly, I'm not sure if this is a scene that's in the original game. Yep, this is what happened, although I think it might be. Yeah, look at that. Guildmaster, watch out! Kabutops and his brutes attacked us without warning. Chadot reacted first and got shielded me and shielded me from them, and he got knocked out. I sent Kabutops gang packing after that, but Chadot was knocked out. I didn't know what to do. I was in a panic because I couldn't help Chadot. That was when Lapras appeared. Lapras? Yes, Lapras. Lapras saved Chadot. So this is how they know each other. Oh, I see. Okay, this scene is definitely in it. Also, that sky is absolutely beautiful. That's how you met Wigglytuff, Lapras. Yes. I didn't intend to reveal myself at all, but I changed my mind the instant I saw Chadot on the ground. I simply had to help. Afterward, I made Wigglytuff promise me something. A promise? Yes. Hey, hey, so what was that promise? I think Lapras recognized that we were an exploration team right away, so he said to us, that he couldn't tell if we were bandits with big ambitions or if we were an exploration team with good intentions. So we asked for the sake of world peace that we please not investigate the peculiar pattern here. That's what he asked of us. So, what was your reply, Guildmaster? Wigglytuff promised to honor my request most agreeably. He said he owed me thanks for coming to Chadot's aid and that he would stop all investigations into the matter. So that's what happened. But why didn't you want anyone to investigate the pattern? In the Hidden Land is Temporal Tower where Dialga reigns. Dialga feared intruders could wreak ha havoc at the tower that regulates time. Dialga decided to protect Temporal Tower. Also, I'm not sure if it's pronounced Dialga or Dialga. Like, obviously, Dialga makes more sense because Diamond. But Dialga is just really easier to say, so that's what I'm sticking with. He hid the hidden land in a gap in time. A gap in time? Yes. It is hard to explain, but it is a gap in time itself. It's a space between parts for of a split second. I see. No wonder the place couldn't be found. A gap in time. No one could ever hope to go to such a place. No. Dialga left one key for entering the hidden land. That's a special fragment with a mysterious pattern etched onto it. When I had heard Wise Old Turkle's tale, and when I saw Evie's relic fragment, I finally understood. I realized then that the peculiar pattern was linked to the hidden land. That's why I headed out to Brine Cave before everyone else went. Because I had to see Lapras. Interesting. I met with Lapras and explained what was happening. How time was stopping all over and how the world was in peril. I also explained how the time gears needed to be taken to Temporal Tower. So I asked him to reveal how we could get to the hidden land. So, what happened? Lapras feel, revealed it to me. He said that the Relic Fragment chooses who will go on to the Hidden Land. The Relic Fragment itself does that? It chooses on its own? Yep, apparently so. And the Relic Fragment chose Eevee. Hey, why did the Relic Fragment choose Eevee? I don't really know. I think Dialga wants to prevent those with bad intentions in their hearts from entering Temporal Tower. That's why the important thing is the purity of heart. 
so Evie's heart must have resonated with the relic fragment. Anyway, we can do no more to help. From now on, this burden belongs to Evie and Trico. That is a powerful line right there, whoa. It's Team Leafaboo's weight to bear now. It's entirely up to them to get to the hidden land. It falls to them to stop the destruction of time. Wow. Yeah, they really are putting all of their hopes in us, two rookie explorers that just showed up like, I don't know, a few months ago, I guess? Yeesh. It's gotta be pretty scary for them, you'd have to imagine. Say Lapras. Yes? You've been swimming a long time. Are you doing okay? I'm fine, Evie. No need for concern. Because you're almost there. See? It's coming into view. What? On the far horizon, do you see where the sea looks a little bit different? Oh, it's sparkly. It's true. The waves. The waves are all twisted up. W what is that? The edge of the gap in time. Also, this music's good. That is the portal through which we will go to Hidden Land. The Hidden Land. Ooh, nice art. Okay, here we go. And so, we get a we get an iPhone notification. No, we basically start flying. Well, Lapras, Lapras is flying. No, that's not it. This this isn't flying. We're crossing the sea of time. Going really quick. Oh, that just looks so awesome. Lapras, is that it? Is that the hidden land? Yes, that's the hidden land. We're going in. I like how Lapras sounds so excited about this too. It's probably, you know, it's definitely the first time she's ever had to done this. I'm do this, I'm sure. Being the the transport of to the hidden land. Like has anyone else ever done it? I doubt it. Anyway, that reveals some of the clouds. Also, I like how they have the little detail of having this sparkly water there before the hidden land. You can see up top. Of course, we were leaving from Brian Cave, so we were leaving from above, north of where we are now. The clouds parted over the hidden land. So we are now freely able to go over here if we so want. This, this is the hidden land. We finally made it here. Please look ahead. Oh, what's that? Ooh, that's scary. Is that, is that perhaps? Yes, it's Temporal Tower. That's where Dialga is. That's where we have to go. The time gears have to be taken there. But, if we take a close look, that place seems to be floating in the sky. How are we supposed to get there? You must take the Rainbow Stone Ship. The Rainbow Stone Ship? Yes. Far ahead, you will find the old ruins. There you will find an ancient mystical vestal. The Rainbow Stone Ship. It will take you to the Temporal Tower. Thank you, Lapras. This is the extent of what I can do for you. From here on, you're on your own. Good luck with reaching the Temporal Tower. Okay. Okay. Groval, Trico, we're almost there. Let's keep it up. All right. So from here on, we're going to have pretty dang hard dungeons. I'll be completely honest here. I'm going to check my storage one more time to see if there's anything I want. Um, if I find any stun seeds, I'm taking them. I'm taking any stun seeds we have for sure. Those are going to be really important. We only have two, really? That sucks. Violent Seed wouldn't be horrible, but once again, it'd be a thing that I'm afraid of using them up. I'm going to take a few Reviver Seeds as well. Um, what does that leave in our inventory, actually? Okay, so a bunch of throwing items, which is all really good. A bunch of Orin Berries. Ooh, I have a lot more Reviver Seeds than I thought. That's fine. That's fine. We'll need them, I'm sure. Some Stun Seeds. The, the Cross Eye Seed we won't really need. We have a used TM that we can just throw off. Okay, okay, that's good to take inventory of what we have before we go in. Uh, we have five full bag spots. I'm gonna fix that up a little bit. Okay, so I freed up a bit of room, so if we find any good items, we'll be able to get them. Hi, Trico, are you ready? Let's go. So we will have Groval accompanying us, luckily. Okay, let's go. So this dungeon is going to have all fully evolved Pokemon, and pretty scary ones at that. We have a Tropius here. Or Tropius, I guess. Tropical stuff. Um, yeah, having two grass types actually won't be too advantageous here. Uh, I will say, if you have a water type right now, 
you would be at a pretty good advantage payback. I think Trico can actually learn that. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to give it to him. Then I think about it, it wouldn't be the worst idea. Um, yeah, basically having a water type would be excellent here. Because water types, as you can see, would take care of a lot of the Pokemon here. Grass Knot's going to destroy this boy. And you'd be able to learn Ice Beam, which will take care of the multiple dragon types you'll see here. Multiple flying types you'll see here. There was Tropius earlier who was double weak to it. Things like that. Um, I think Eevee might be in Runaway. Yeah. We'll just have to... Okay. Keep near here. Yeah. Things are going to be very dangerous from here on out, so we want to play very conservatively. Make sure nothing can go wrong that can go wrong. As you can see, another a, a fire type. Like, this is really where your water type will shine and have a little bit easier run of it. Like I said, water types are a lot better later in the game. Uh, grass types really dominate early game. Um... I don't want to get one shot by a by a Magmortar, so I'm not going to deal with that. Uh, do I have a move that hits across things? I don't think I do. I'll just throw Geo Pebbles. Help help Eevee out there. I don't like how often Eevee's using Wide Slash. Um, honestly, oh, I have it swapped to only Wide Slash. That's wrong. That's why. Jeez, Wide Slash is not a move you just want to be using all willy nilly. Uh, it's not too powerful to be honest. However, if there's multiple enemies in front of you, it will do work. Oh, those are scary. Look at that big old tackle. Big damage. Um, yeah, I'm going to take that HP right on back if you don't mind. Please be like a stun seed or something. Cross Eye Seed. All right. I think Grass Knot will be pretty powerful against these areas. Yeah, like I said earlier, all the Pokemon here are going to be fully evolved. Very large and like scary Pokemon. So really, Grass Knot should be pretty dang useful. If I were to say so myself. Oh, that's a fun situation. Okay. Um, I think I d I'm more worried about Eevee. To be honest, you can see Groval's level 46, so we don't really have to worry about him too much. He'll be just fine. Eevee, however, little worried about. And she got burned. Yeah, it's just scary. Also, Groval still has Absorb when we have Mega Drain. Interesting. Please don't use Bite. Thank you. Tackle's just so much more powerful. And yeah, burning is going to half Eevee's uh, attack power. Uh, clear Gummy, I'm going to go ahead and give that to Eevee right now. I don't know if we'll be getting through this dungeon in one go. Wait, Clear Gummy isn't good for normal? What was it then? Huh. Do we have anything? We have a Cherry Berry, that's Paralysis. I don't think I even brought any Heal Seeds. That's kind of bad. Alright, we'll just have to... Ooh, you know, that is really bad. Oh wait, no, no, with Burn, never mind. You do still uh, recover HP when you have Burn. So yeah, that's not too bad at all, actually. It's just decreasing Eevee's attack power will be very bad for that. Oh, man. I don't... I don't... Ooh! I don't think us as a Trico will be able to learn Leaf Blade. I'm not sure if that's in his moveset, and I, I want to say it's not, to be honest. God, this place is scary. Grass Knot, this big bad boy. Or not. Quick Attack, very much appreciated. Ooh! So, being immobilized is pretty dang similar to uh, being paralyzed. I believe you can still use moves. Actually, I'm not sure. Let's, let's test it out. Yeah, you can still use moves when immobilized. You just can't, you know, move. Uh, Endure is a ability that's really strong in this game as well. Because basically you can't be knocked out. And I just got swaggered. All right. Ugh, Eevee missing the moves. Just get one hit off and he's dead. Thank you. Yeah, while you have Endure up, you cannot be knocked out at all. So, it can be pretty frustrating to go against. I'm going to go ahead and take this red gummy. There's no reason to give it to Groval. Don't do it. For the love of God, you're not going to be with Groval a lot longer. Just as a heads up. Uh, don't, don't invest anything in him. Just because he's a recurring character doesn't mean he's permanent. Let that be uh, a thing of the whole game. Uh, no one's permanent unless you recruit him. Speaking of recruiting, you can't actually recruit Emneath 1 from the Brine Cave onward uh, until you beat the game. So, just so you know. Ooh, that's scary. Um, I have Aerial Ace. Kaboom. How much damage does that do in comparison to Pound? It's a bit more. So it is still pretty useful, at the very least. Yeah, Tropius. Uh, one of the Pokemon that, that'll be very useful for. Aerial Ace again. Um, I'm actually going to check payback. Okay, no, we cannot use it. However, if you're wondering what it is, 
Um, gives you a counter thing. Wait, didn't Eevee learn this? Or someone learned a move similar to this. Yeah, you counter physical attacks doing the same amount of damage to the opponent that they did to you, uh, basically. Uh, like I said before, there are a lot of moves in this game that differ from their main game counterparts, so it's it's important to point it out. Also, level 35. We're going to be wanting to hopefully be getting a lot of level ups here because as we move on, the opponents will just get exponentially harder. And I'm not sure how much we'll be able to get through at our current levels. Probably not much if I were to give a guess. Also, grass not coming through in spades, honestly. Ooh, don't like that. I'm gonna have to find a wonder tile as soon as I can. Thank you for taking that out. Ooh. Also, it's nice being able to one-shot Rampardos, because that's a really scary Pokemon, having a humongous attack stat. If it gets an attack off, you probably are in danger. Okay, nothing down there. Also, once again, uh, if you do have a flying type, which you wouldn't at this point, because, like, you can't have a flying type, uh you would be able to fly over these spots. But once again, only something you can do when you bring in other members because none of the starters are flying type, which is kind of a shame. I kind of wish they just added in like, I don't know, Starly or something, a Gen 4 representative. I guess it would have been pretty weak compared to a lot of the other Pokemon, but still. Like, you have Skitty, which I guess technically has double slap. But doesn't Starly learn Fury Attack? Uh, now I think about it, I don't, I'm not sure if it does. Ooh, yeah. You can see, there are Garchomps. If you have a Water type, God bless you, you're going to destroy this bad boy. But otherwise, keep your distance and try to do as much damage at, at once as you can. Grass not in that bad boy. I also want to say it has rough skin, so be careful of that. I'm not sure what it, exactly that ability's effect is in this game, but I'd still be careful of it regardless. Also, I love this music. It's pretty dang good. I think one attack will do it, yeah. I am going to ambush this boy as well, just because experience is important, and we don't have too much farther to go in this current dungeon chain. Uh, this area has 15 floors, so we'll be able to... Hmm. Grass not special, I think. Luckily. I mean, we knock him out one hit anyway. If they're knocked out, it doesn't actually do the counterattack, and... That's another thing, um, oftentimes this dungeon will have sunny weather, but there is one Pokemon in this area that has snow warning. So, keep that in mind, there all, will be an ice type in here that we're going to want to avoid. We'll throw in Eevee to, to attack that later on. I feel like I was talking about something earlier and I got off track. I'm not sure exactly what it was. Ooh, Perugly, okay. Ooh! Please do damage. Thank you. All right, that should be fine then. Yeah, there's only 15 floors here, uh, and then there's going to be a second dungeon that we'll have to take on that will also be fairly demanding. This is definitely one of the longer dungeons we're going to have in the immediate future. Not the longest though, because oh boy, we have a challenge coming. All right, that delayed us enough. I should have Groval attack more. He is very, very powerful. We should definitely be utilizing that while we have it. Dragonites! That's right, it's not It's not just Garchomps. I believe there's also Salamences here. Another thing to be careful of, for sure. I don't know why I used Aerial Ace, I should have just pounded. Take that. Cool. Uh, I think... Yeah, no one's gonna wake up that boy. I'd rather not, honestly. Although the Dragonites would be pretty good uh, experience grinding, if you wanna risk it. I'm not sh exactly sure what moves they have here, but I know that they can learn the elemental punches, and if we were hit by an ice punch from a Dragonite, I'm not sure we would be able to outlive it. Okay, that's a wonder tile that actually, they're not, that's not a wonder tile. That's a trap that changes all of the items in the room into enemies. So goodbye to that orb, I guess we'll never know what it was. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really not worried about the dungeon itself here also, by the way. Also, by the way, how much of a double could I add in there? I'm more worried about the boss at the end of it. Because it is, in my opinion, probably the... In the main story, it's probably the second hardest boss. Um, I would give the hardest one, in all honesty, to the Luxray or Manetric gang, depending on whatever game you're playing. Speaking of Manetric, they're going to be here now. And I think this is where we're going to see a lot more sunny weather. 
which actually would benefit us. I mean, not really, I guess, because we don't really have a uh, solar beam. I don't even know if Trico can learn solar beam at that matter. But it would definitely would, ah, it would hinder us because all these, okay. All these fire types would have huge damage on us. That'd be scary. That dig just did 250 damage. That's absolutely ridiculous. And we're confused, and we're confused again. And Groval's confused. Yeesh. All right, let's get some more experience then, I guess, while we're waiting. Now, this is a fairly short dungeon chain. Uh, I believe it's only eight floors, so we shouldn't be struggling that too much throughout here. I'm definitely also not going to be conserving any PP because it's not that big of a deal. Once again, uh, you don't really get into the dungeons where... Oh... Okay. I'm going to use Mega Drain just to get HP back. Um, you're not going to be getting in into any dungeons that will test your endurance until post-game. Everything right now is just kind of baby's first mystery dungeon. <laughs> baby's first dungeon crawler. They're all fairly short and you don't really have to manage your resources at all. Unless it's like a PP with a move with like five PP or something. Which we also haven't seen any PP ups yet. You def they definitely are in the game. Reflect. Ooh. That's for physical moves. Um, it basically has the damage from it. And I don't know if it affects your entire team or if it's just you. Uh, surely someone... Oh, I'm just going to drop this. Like, we don't need that. Someone's going to pick that up. Um, no one can even learn it. But, uh, yeah, I'm just not sure if it affects your whole team or just you. If it does affect your whole team, though, it would be very useful in many boss fights, I'm sure. Instantly taking half the damage you would normally. So, I guess I'm, I'm going to check it. Just to make sure. Uh, gives the user a flex status, having physical attack. Looks like it's only you that uses that gets the benefit of the move. So in that case, I couldn't really recommend it. Or though maybe the maybe the description's just off. And in that case, go ahead and use it because it's really good. Anyway, maybe if you're just traveling alone, it's not that bad. I don't know. Bunch of different situations. Really, there's not even a single move in this game that's not useful in one way or another. Ooh, ooh, new move. Baton pass, I, this swaps positions with all the, you know, whatever. Switches the user's position with the positions of other Pokemon in the room successively. Um, I'm not going to learn that. Definitely not on my list of moves I need, for sure. I'd rather keep Eevee to being a t an attacking powerhouse. Basically a glass cannon when you think about it. Ugh, nothing. The Manetric's gonna be in here. I'd rather keep EV2 attacking as much as possible rather than using all these tricky moves. Definitely not up Eevee's playstyle in this game, at least. Also, that, uh, I've, I've kind of been wondering. I'm not sure how exactly to go about choosing. Uh, choosing what evolution I'm going to use for Eevee. Um, I am slightly tempted just to do Gen 4, just because this is a Gen 4 game and it make kind of sense. But at the same time, uh, that would literally, since we already have a, a grass type, I wouldn't want to have a Leafeon. That would pretty much limit us to Glaceon. And as most people know, ice types aren't the best in this in Pokemon games, though it wouldn't be too bad in this game since speed doesn't matter at all. Isn't Glaceon super slow, or am I incorrect here? Stats really don't matter in this game, as a head is up. Um, most Pokemon level up the same way. The only ones that are going to have really drastic changes are if they have, you know, really drastic stats. Like, a Rampardos is obviously going to be stronger than your average Eevee. Or, uh, I guess not Eevee's a bad, <laughs> Eevee's a bad choice for that. Rampardos is going to be better than your average Wurmple, obviously but it's not going to be by an absolute insane amount. So basically, I'd be making this decision based only on the typing of the evolution, basically, and just my personal preference. So I could easily just go with a Glaceon. It's not like Glaceon's going to lose too much... Um, too much of its power, although that's another thing to consider. Eevee, very likely, will be the most powerful Pokemon we could have uh, 
including its evolutions. Eevee will be losing adaptability whenever it evolves, so it's not going to have that huge physical attacking prowess. But I almost think that having the choice of any type to have onto our team, our main team, is still worth it. It's still worth that loss. Because Ice-type would be insane. I don't know if Vaporeon can learn an Ice-type move, but if it can, that would be another great choice. In addition to having the ability to walk over water. Though, once again, like I said, it can get annoying because you don't always want to walk over water. Oh, thanks for that. And thanks for that on Eevee as well. Oh, yikes, I don't like that. Um, Mega Drain. Blah. Yeah, we're getting near the end of this, though. So we'll see if we're on par enough to uh, take down this next boss fight. Still not too confident. I'm not going to lie. Uh, maybe if we could get one more level of on Trico, he should be close at the very least, because Eevee's already gotten that extra level up. We might be at a better chance. I don't think he learns anything, any moves, because that would obviously come after you evolve or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm getting at. I'm not also not sure if this is the last floor or if the next floor is the last floor. Uh, let's take down this big bad boy. So Pound is doing 48. And just as reference, Aerial Ace will do 49. So it's basically the exact same to Pound, except it's a flying type move. So there you go. Usefulness at its best. Plus, like I, I don't think I, I failed to mention this before, Aerial Ace has 100% hit rate. So if any Pokemon is ever giving us trouble by using... Basically using... Uh, evasion increasing attacks all the time we can take advantage of it all right i'm not liking uh the position this dragonite's putting us in we had pp saver so that's cool we haven't gotten the chance to show overgrowth one even once i think in this game if we did it was definitely early mm. dude what <laughs> how do we get oh no i'm pretty low hp they could probably knock me out if they focused on it I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. Please knock something out, Grovile. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Eevee, use a quick attack on that. Mmm. Alright, I'm gonna take out this Dragonite first as well, because I don't want it to turn Eevee into Runaway. Good, good, good. And that's gonna give us a level up, which is pretty great. Giving us a new move! Slam. Okay, let's look at this. Let's look at this before we decide. So, its power is humongous. Look at its hit ratio. That's four. I don't know the exact percentage of that, uh, just from knowing. Um, it'll be the exact same as pound. Okay, so that's six power, four hit ratio. Pound has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hit ratio, four power. Um, now, here's my question. Uh, that has four power. This has dependent power, so it doesn't matter. This has five power. Uh, I'm, I'm going to get rid of pound for it. And uh, my reasoning for this is that as we've gone through the game, pound has gotten less and less useful. And that is obviously because there's going to be more Pokemon that are going to be more susceptible to Trico's actual attacks. Um, I also, that leaves me with no selected move. Ooh. Yeah, the missing will definitely be a problem, I think. As you can see. <laughs> Good lord. Let's try and get a hit. 53. Yeah, and the main problem with this is that... Slam isn't going to have... Um... What am I trying to say? It's not going to have as much power as Mega Drain and Grass Knot, even still, because they're stab-based moves. And I'm obviously only going to use Grass Knot on, like, big Pokemon. Anyway... We made it to the end. I am afraid. And you're going to see why I'm afraid in the next episode. See you all then, and goodbye.